everyone and welcome to Annabelle's Jewelry. For today's video, we are continuing with our new series on needed AWS fundamentals to ensure you pass your AWS certifications. Let's dive into the fundamentals of Amazon EC2. For this lesson, I want to do a high level overview of Amazon EC2 and we will be diving deeper into the fundamentals in later lessons, but for this fundamental series, I wanted to first add fundamentals for the core services in AWS. So what is EC2 and what does it provide? Well, EC2 is a virtualization as a service. It is an infrastructure as a service or IaaS product and it provides so much value to your AWS accounts. And part of the fundamentals needed is to understand virtualization. So what is virtualization? Well, it is running one or more operating systems on a piece of physical hardware known as a server. Each operating system is separate along with their applications and also allows multiple different privileged applications to run on that same hardware using software to make their calls. And this virtualization started off with two different designs and then from there it has kept evolving. Emulated virtualization was the first design of software virtualization and with this design the host operating system still ran on the hardware along with the hypervisor that had additional capabilities. And then on top of this was a guest operating system that is known as a virtual machine and then each virtual machine was Windows or Linux and so on and each had a virtual allocation of resources so CPU, memory, and local disk space. VMs also have other devices mapped to them like network cards, graphic cards, and more. And to make a long story short, the part of emulated virtualization to understand is that these guest operating systems believe that they are real, not virtualized, and also that they are running on real hardware. But this design was very slow because VMs had to talk directly to the hardware. So para virtualization was created to work on operating systems that can be modified and with para virtualization the guest operating system are still running in the same design but instead of calling to the hardware the operating system is modified to have that privilege calls become user calls and those calls are then made to the hypervisor instead of the hardware. So the calls are passed to the hypervisor instead of the hardware, which is quicker. And with para virtualization, the operating system almost becomes aware of its virtualization, which does improve the performance. Virtualization then changed the design again, and hardware-assisted virtualization was introduced. And in this design, the CPU knows it's virtual and contains instructions and additional capabilities to allow the hypervisor to directly configure and control that CPU virtualization. So when privileged calls are made, those calls go to the CPU and then are redirected from the operating systems to the hypervisor because the operating system still believes it is real. Remember, the virtual machines believe they are real. For example, the virtual machines believe they have a physical network card, but what they actually have are logical devices that use a driver that connect back to the physical piece of hardware on the host operating system. And this process does consume CPU cycles on the host and can impact the performance. But there is a last design where the hardware becomes aware of the virtualization. So the network cards and so on, and this is SRIOV or single root IO virtualization. And the way that SRIOV works is that it allows add on cards, like our example above, a network card to present itself as many cards instead of one single network. And as far as the hardware for the virtual machine is concerned, these are fully unique cards and they are presented to our guest operating system as real cards for its own use. So no translation is needed for the privileged calls. And with EC2, you can use SRIOV to meet enhanced networking requirements like faster speeds, low latency, even with higher loads, less CPU usage, and so on. 
Let's move on and take a look at the architecture for an Amazon EC2. Like we just discussed, EC2 are virtual machines, so the operating systems and also resources like memory, CPU, storage, and more. Also, like we just discussed, EC2 instances run on EC2 host, which is the physical hardware or physical servers that AWS manages for us. EC2 is the default AWS compute service, and the EC2 hosts are either shared or dedicated hosts. Shared hosts are default for EC2 hosts, and these are shared among different AWS customers, and the customers do not get any ownership of the host hardware. You pay for your individual instances and resources, but it is important to remember that when you use a shared host, your instance is isolated from other AWS customers. With dedicated hosts, you are paying for the entire EC2 host, not just the instances you run on that host. You do not share it, you pay for the entire host, no matter how many EC2 instances you spin up. EC2 instances are an availability resilient service because the EC2 hosts sit in an availability zone. So if that AZ fails, then the host and the instances running on that host also fail. Now EC2 hosts sit inside an availability zone also have local storage called instant store. And we will be covering this more in depth later on in the EC2 section for this fundamental series. The key to understand with instant store is that it is temporary. And if your EC2 instance moves off the host to another host, then your storage in the instant store is lost. And for networking, you will hear that security groups are attached to your EC2 instance, but this is not necessarily true. The way it works is that when an EC2 instance is launched into a specific subnet inside your VPC, a primary elastic network interface or ENI is provisioned into that subnet and then is mapped to the physical hardware of that EC2 host for that availability zone. And you can add multiple different ENIs to your EC2 instances. So let's go back to storage and talk about how an EC2 instance can connect to an elastic box store or Amazon EBS. And the way that this works is that EBS lets you access volumes of persistent storage and we'll cover storage fundamentals in an upcoming lesson. So inside your VPC, you have a data network set up for your ENI, but you also have a storage network to connect to your EBS volumes. And like Amazon EC2, Amazon EBS is an availability resilient service. So you can have different EBS volumes running in different subnets for different EC2 instances, but you cannot connect EC2 instances to EBS volumes in a different availability zone or subnet. Let's cover a few exam tips. It's crucial for your exam to know the behaviors of EC2 instances. For example, if your EC2 host is running on a specific host, what happens if you restart your EC2 instance? Well, it'll stay with that same EC2 host, but if the instance is stopped and then restarted, or if AWS stops the instance for maintenance on their end, then the instance will be reassigned to another host in that same availability zone. So EC2 instances live and remain inside one availability zone, but you can migrate your EC2 instance by copying your EC2 instance and then creating a new instance in a new availability zone. And a great tool for that is snapshots and AMIs, which we will be diving deeper into both in a later section. And usually EC2 hosts contains lots of different instances of the same type, but different sizes. And we will learn about all of the instance types and sizes, again, under the EC2 section for fundamentals. But let's quickly mention that you have two types of EC2 instances, burstable and steady state load. And again, we'll cover more depth a bit later on. Now, if you found this content useful, a like and a subscribe would mean a lot to me. It really helps me know what y'all like, and it gives me an indicator that I'm building useful content. Now, in the next lesson, we will cover another core AWS service, and that is Amazon S3. Thanks so much for watching.